Moving on to our last uh, subsection uh, for today, the three most important qualities in a coach. Obviously, there are many qualities that a good coach possesses, but a few are very, very necessary, imperative. Okay. Uh, context is important. What age group you're working with? Uh, what is the goal of your players? But then I think the similarities far outweigh the differences, whichever age group you work with. There are some things which are common in an, any good coach. If I was asked this question a decade ago, I would have perhaps said knowledge of the sport is the most important quality a coach should possess. Yeah. Uh, today, I will not agree with that. Knowledge is something which is easily available at the click of a button. Any kid can uh, Google it up and uh, make you look very tiny. So knowledge of the sport is not the most important thing. I think knowledge of people, knowledge how to connect with uh, each and every support staff member and each and every athlete who's playing with you, that is a very important skill to develop. And the third one is knowledge of yourself. There are far too many coaches uh, who don't know their own coaching philosophies, their own values, what they believe in, and what is their real purpose behind being a coach. At the grassroots level, I'd say three absolutely important qualities that a coach must possess. High energy, tons of patience, and abundance of empathy. To those three, I'd like to, if I am permitted, add humor, a subtle sense of humor which doesn't hurt anybody, and a growth mindset, constantly uh, trying to improve your own coaching delivery. A curious mind. Yeah. One of the coaches I had the privilege to work with who demonstrated these in abundance was Vasu Paranjpe, the late Vasu Paranjpe from Mumbai. Uh, amazing coach, lot of energy, great sense of humor, uh, amazing patience and care which went well beyond uh, the call of duty. And kids just flocked to him, they believed in him and they refused to leave even if uh, the time was up. Yeah. Amazing person from whom I learned a lot. Uh, and that's at grassroots level. But Sri, what I what do you think are the non-negotiable qualities for a coach who's working at elite levels? Good one, Doc. I mean, elite levels, I think at the elite level, because you're handling athletes who are very skilled, extremely skilled, supposed to be the best in the business. I think from becoming a teacher, you become a server. I'm sure Arun sir would like to use the word facilitator. That's uh, very important to be a leader at the, at the, at the elite level. So a, a, a word which our uh, prime minister uses quite often, right? Pradhan Mantri nahi, Pradhan Seva Khoma. So at the, I think at the elite level, it's becoming a teacher, you become, you become a good server. And there's a big difference, Doc, from the uh, grassroots level to the elite level, what I have learned. At the grassroots level, we need to give validation to the player that you are good enough, you are doing this right, you know, and uh, yeah, this is right, this is correct, you are in the right way, well done. But I think as you start interacting and, uh, you know, helping elite athletes, you have to give information because they know that they are good. More than validation, they need information. So you, be, you become a server, you give good information which they need to uh, set up the game or on which they can build their game, make their game plans. And uh, you said empathy is required at the, at the grassroots level. I would go one step up and I would say compassion. Compassion is a quality which uh, uh, is required uh, at, the, at the elite level. But Doc, having said all these three qualities are very, very important. Again, one quality which I would say I would recommend to all Indian coaches who are aiming to coach at the elite level. And uh, I learned this from Ravi, uh, Ravi Shastri himself. The number one quality which would uh, be required to coach at the elite level, let's say an Indian team, I think is integrity. 
I think uh, integrity of maintaining the sanctity of the change room, integrity of uh, you know, like you're a doctor, doc. You know, you know what what does integrity mean of uh, you know your patient's uh, uh, information. So it's very important that along with uh, being a good server, along with being a good listener, uh, showing compassion and giving more information than validation. Uh, of course, sense of humor is important at all levels of uh, coaching to be able to connect more quickly. Integrity is something which um, I would uh, I would throw in, in the mix to be to be uh, effective at the end. I'm sure Arun sir will have a few more uh, qualities to add. Yeah, Arun, would you like to say something on that one? Well, um, uh, I can uh, reflect on those two things that drove the Indian team during our thing. It was by Ravi Shastri and Virat Kohli. It was being fearless and being honest. I think uh, Sridhar spoke about integrity. Uh, so I think it's uh, it's about what saying being fearless is, yeah, you can make a statement, but what constitutes being fearless? You know, that is very, very important. Where uh, I think uh, it is uh, ex extremely important for coaches to set up that atmosphere where people are not afraid of failing um, and uh, they are only looking at ways to improve upon themselves and what they could bring to the team's values, core values of the team. How could a player uh, work himself and position himself to, uh, to contribute to the score team values? I think if each and every one, if you can instill this in players, uh, you probably have a team that is really looking up and the team that is playing together. Uh, so, yes, uh, Sri spoke about uh, compassion. I think a lot of compassion stems out of uh, empathy as well. Um, so, I think a lot of things are related in this. Um, so it's it's a contribution. If you if you look at coaching the elite and coaching, sometimes even at elite levels, we need to be insistent on the basics, because basics is something which uh, sometimes elite players tend to take for granted. So constantly bringing their styles, bringing their innovations as close to the basics as possible sometimes works. So uh, uh, it it does inter. Um, uh, you know, uh, interlap, uh, you know, coaching at uh, grassroots, coaching at elite level. It's nothing, it's not It's not a rocket science, but as coaches, it, it relates to more feedback with the uh, elite levels. Whereas, uh, as Sridhar rightfully put it, at uh, junior levels, it is, it is more about, uh, you know, being empathetic, being encouraging, being uh, setting up a great atmosphere, having a lot of energy, all these things are extremely important uh, at the junior and uh, also the senior levels. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful, Arun. Uh, you rightly mentioned the philosophy with which uh, Ravi Shastri drove the Indian team during those seven years that put in an honest effort and then play fearlessly. But then I see a lot of coaches who do say the same thing. But the first error that the player commits on the field, they are reprimanded very ruthlessly. Uh, you're not walking the talk then, you know. And obviously, the player is going to lose trust. Uh, lot of, a lot of uh, coaches do say, go and play your natural game. Uh, use your own uh, ability of decision making. But the first error is, uh, you know, stamped at and looked down upon. And that really leads to a trust deficit uh, forming between the coach and the athlete in the future. The player is never going to take his own decision ever again. Isn't that so, Sri? Yes, Doc. I mean, um, Paji spoke about uh, creating a fearless uh, environment. I think a lot of it lies in the hands of the coaches. You know, how how how, how do you look at errors is what creates a fearless environment how you treat errors is what creates a fearless environment how you how you uh, react to the errors by the uh, by your athletes by your players is what creates a fearless environment so if you react in the positive way to it by asking good questions then you create an environment fearlessness mistakes 
lead should lead to curiosity curiosity should lead to creativity and when the players get creative that leads to a miracle in, in my opinion but if mistakes are treated as mistakes and used as an a uh, vehicle to reprimand then then you're killing the curiosity you're killing the creativity and uh, then you become a mediocrity so uh, faji spoke about being fearless and honest i think it takes a lot of effort to create a fearless environment because mistakes will be made every now and then by amateur athletes if using that mistakes to ask the right questions and uh, instill more curiosity in the athlete that will lead to creativity and that creativity will lead to athletes of the next generation fantastic arun shri mentioned something on compassion you know uh, even grown up superstars are kids at heart isn't it they need a lot of compassion they need a lot of empathy uh, they are human beings after all what do you say did you have any particular situations where you had to use your empathy any emotional quotient skills to the maximum see doc i think it is more in relation to our coaching philosophy you don't coach the sport you coach the person okay there have been instances even at the uh, uh, elite levels in the indian team there has been an instance when the players have gone through uh, certain personal uh, problems uh, they were uh, bold and fearless enough to come and discuss those personal problems with you they sometimes uh, their personal problems also let them uh, they were on the verge of giving up the sport okay and uh, yes um, though you are not a psychologist but of course you could uh, give a patient hearing and advise the players on the positive side of uh, what they could do uh, there was such an instance where a player had come up with this personal problem and then uh, on the verge of giving up the sport has come to uh, gone on to dominate uh, the international circuit in the future so i think yes uh, to answer your question they are vulnerable they are human they are like anyone else uh, it doesn't matter where you belong whether you are at the highest level or whether you are uh, uh, you know at junior levels they are vulnerable and as coaches uh, it is extremely important for us to be uh, uh, compassionate Uh, be patient give them a good hearing and uh, we could we could definitely make uh, a difference the the biggest positivity about a sports coach is uh, given the right kind of thing he can make a positive influence and a difference in any of those athletes another brilliant question from one of our participants uh, uh, he's asking that there are of course many coaches all over the world but few of them are quality coaches so what do you think separates the average coach from a quality coach who's the one who's going to uh, succeed at the top that's a very very good question doc you know there are so many coaches uh, across our country across the maidans across the grounds so many academies around around our country every lake bed is got an academy now so many coaches so what separates a good coach a quality coach from an average coach good question i think the first uh, the first point which comes to my mind is uh, planning and preparation a quality coach is someone who is uh, better prepared in fact well prepared than an average coach who turns up, who turns up at 1 minute or 2 minutes before start of the session or even 5 minutes after the session starts and then looking for players to involve in activity but i think a quality coach would prepare better would plan a session well in advance and come another another criteria which to me separates a quality coach from an average coach is uh, a coach who updates herself or himself you know a, a quality coach is uh, always trying to stay up to date with uh, the relevance of coaching always trying to learn improve through various uh, a uh, methods whether it is listening to podcasts whether whether it is reading books or uh, attending seminars or actually coaching under a, a mentor coach it could be anything but a quality coach is someone who is always looking to upgrade 
an average coach is someone who is always uh, looking to coach uh, for uh, for their development so again a quality coach is someone who finds joy in the development of the player and is willing to go extra yard to put in that effort an average coach is someone who is looking for their own uh, development so like that is the coaching phrase which i always use uh, like you know if you look to make a difference you will make a good living that's what uh, we always say in us but yeah again cutting uh, a long story short a quality coach is someone who's always well planned well prepared a uh, quality coach is someone who's always looking to improve uh, looking to evolve as a coach and a quality coach is someone who coaches the person and not the sport so for that you need to know the person behind the player isn't that so sri absolutely a quality coach is someone who make an effort to know more about the person their background uh, and uh, make a difference i think uh, everyone we have suggested any anybody who watched ted lasso he he knew zilch about football but he made a difference yes it is fictional but that to me is coaching you know you don't need to uh, know the sport to be a quality coach that is very very important you need to know the person you can make a you can make a difference in a person's life to improve the standard of their uh, ability to perform in sport so that that is what ted lasso did in the tv series which is available on apple tv so uh, you need to you need to know the person you need to coach the person who happens to be playing the sport that to me is a quality coach in the ted lasso is a brilliant example of someone who adapted to a different culture adapted to a different sport uh, great great example sri arun here's a tricky one for you you know uh despite all your efforts there could be a couple of players in your team who refuse to buy into your ideas refuse to buy into your philosophy yeah uh would you prefer to uh, eject such people from your team remove them or would you try something else well they they pose the maximum challenge for a coach i would say i would look at such players and say they are out to teach me something and uh um if if you really want me to sum it up in one line the easiest thing is to throw them out but i think the big, bigger end of a biggest challenge for you as a coach is to win them over i would go for the latter uh then uh, you know throwing them out and i would view such players as bigger challengers and uh, challenging the coach and also an opportunity for me to get better come out of my comfort zone and get better yeah that's a brilliant one uh, arun shri there's a, a doubt amongst quite a few of our participants which says that if you tend to be very athlete centered give them a lot of freedom uh, you may lose uh, the discipline in your team you know uh, does it really happen like that and uh, uh, i mean these coaches uh, these participants have asked that if you do lose the discipline would you use some punitive action against them punish them by making them run some laps or uh, uh, impose some fines on them do you think such things actually work doc firstly fitness should never be a soft word for soft word for punishment okay so uh, i as a coach would always advocate <coughs> never give never give a uh, a uh, 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 running or push-ups or whatever those uh, fitness exercises as punishment, because then players and athletes will start looking at uh, fitness in a very negative way. Fitness is a force skill. Again, now coming back to your to your question, it's a fantastic question. I faced these challenges when I was coaching at the under nineteen level uh, from administrators. Every administrator thought uh, I was too easy on players. I know I've had instances where uh, association secretaries have barged into my change room and said that you are too easy with the boys you are too friendly you have to scold them you have to make them run you have to conduct meetings for 2 2 hours that is what gives success 
uh well in my opinion or my philosophy is slightly different uh our philosophy at coaching beyond is empowering players so what i have learned from arun sir while uh, interning under him throughout my career as a coach is uh, the more rules you have the more they will be broken i think every opportunity every opportunity or every mistake an athlete makes is an opportunity for us to evolve as a coach and for us to evolve as a human being and for us to teach the person a good life lesson so uh, uh, so have very little rules give athletes freedom and it's about having their trust right i mean all these answers are intertwined you know they all you know like overlap with each other if you build good trust with the players then you know you know that if even if you give them enough freedom they will not break the trust and they will not misuse the freedom but if you keep too many rules too many regulations too many curfews you know the players are going to eventually break the curfew and break and you know and break a rule or two so i think the environment the climate which we talk about again and again what we keep or what we create as a coach as a coaching unit as support staff is vital is vital to that uh, yes every now and then odd player would break the would break the rule would would uh, misuse their freedom but again to me that's another opportunity to coach the person rather than uh, coach the sport so i always look forward to such opportunities but uh, obviously my coaching even in my last coaching assignment as director of cricket uh, for the ilt20 team with sharja warriors basically i was fired because i was too easy with them very interesting not, yeah. not you i i strongly feel you instill good values in your players then you don't need to punish them at all when you give freedom it means you are give you are handing over responsibility also you know you have to responsible behavior is a result of giving freedom i think you know so i think uh, well answered shri and uh, coming to the last uh, couple of questions uh, uh, shri what do you do to your team how how do you rebuild trust when your team is on a losing streak you know there could be times when you a string of losses players seem to be losing confidence in your ability your competence uh, what's what will be your method to stand out at that time Oof, i think arun sir would be in a better position to answer in a question but i can answer with my recent experience uh, i think string of losses obviously it's not that the players lose trust in the coach but there is a possibility that the players lose trust in each other as a team you know as a unit so that is something which as a coach uh, you know we need to be guarded against so players will start losing trust in each other's abilities and the blame game will start so it's very important there is enough transparency very very important that uh, all the decisions we take as a team are collective it's very important that as a coach you know we 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 take inputs from the players uh, and uh, we help the players to, we need the players to buy in to the team's uh, ideas and the team's goals and the team's plans so it's uh, very imperative that you keep the team together through a lot of uh, team building activities and uh, through activities which will build uh, trust not just with the coaching staff and the players but also amongst the players very very important like you said very early in the in the webinar players trust is also within the players as well that is something which can break down very quickly if there is a losing streak so we have to be guarded against that and take measures to work on that and if the if the uh, plans we give the information we give is correct based on what the the team requires according to the conditions according to the strengths of the team and the opponents and the weakness of the opponents i think you will uh, keep the team together uh, through various activities and uh, players will know very 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 easily they'll be able to read the pulse of the coach if they are working in the right direction if their integrity is there and if you if you have the players back or not it's very important that you have the players back during such times fantastic so uh, there are a large number of questions but we'll take the last one for the day Uh, i know everyone's got a sunday afternoon planned and a cracker of a match coming up uh, in a couple of hours so 
Arun, the last question, uh, how important is it for a coach to have confidence in their own philosophy, their own methods, you know? Is there a thin line between coach confidence and coach ego? How, how would you make sure that the coach must have confidence but not spill over to ego? Uh, Doc, uh, I think that's a very, very tricky and an interesting question too. Because when we were coming up as coaches, we always had this doubt in us. Are we good enough? Um, you know, you heard so much about foreign coaches doing this. Are we good enough? Uh, can we match up to the standards set by the foreign coaches? All these doubts went into our mind. Even when we were with the Indian team, the question came up, oh, yes, though our dream was to be with the Indian team as coaches, he said, uh, having got the job, then you start wondering, do I have the capacity uh, to, um, you know, guide these top athletes to achieving their potential? All these doubts do crop up. This is when uh, I feel when you, uh, you read a lot, you read a lot, not only about cricket, you read a lot about different styles of coaching, you re read about different coaches and, uh, you know, find out what exactly is your coaching philosophy first. And if you can... If you can get a lot of information about different coaching styles, different coaching abilities, and back your coaching philosophy with those abilities uh, that you pick up, uh, I think you would do well. I think doubts uh, in any coach's mind are uh, is there, but then uh, the uh, slowly as you keep working, when you read about other styles, when you read about other coaches, you then begin to understand. Yes. I do have the ability to be a coach. Um, I do have the ability to outshine uh, people and my competitors. And slowly, confidence is something that builds up over a period of time. But to have these doubts are extremely normal for any coach. You could do that by acquiring more and more knowledge, more about studying the other styles of different top quality coaches in the world, and then understanding what their philosophy is and relating your philosophy. Absolutely, Arun. Do you think it would make sense for our uh, young coaches to go and observe master coaches in action? That, that's a great way to learn, understand their philosophies, understand their styles better. Uh, and it need not uh, be a cricket coach. You could watch a great football coach in action, a great uh, volleyball coach in action and learn something from them also. Definitely, what do you feel? Arun? Definitely, yes, Doc. Because I think you learn so much by being under a, a you know, top coach. Then you, I think that gives you a lot of confidence saying that, oh, they're, what they're doing is not rocket science. It is like what normal any other human being who understands things, who understands people do. And I would also have these qualities to excel. So that is when, when you, when you work with master coaches, that give, you, you begin to gain a lot of confidence and say, I have all these qualities to sustain as a good coach. Right. Thanks a lot, Arun. Uh, very wise words from both of you all. Very encouraging words from you, Arun, in particular, in the last question. All of us have the ability to excel and we must believe in our methods. Uh, whatever uh, the results may be up and down, uh, that's part of uh, the whole process. But uh, we need to stick with our uh, basics. Uh, I think uh, that brings us to the end of this wonderful uh, session together. Uh, as promised, uh, I would like to make a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, this is not the, the first and last of its kind. We intend to do many of these so that we create a community of coaches. And uh, some of these uh, programs will be open to outsiders as well. Other coaches uh, are welcome, but there will be some which will be exclusively for people like you all who have come to Coaching Beyond at Chennai or Hyderabad been part of uh, any of our courses, been part of uh, our internship programs. So uh, we keep looking forward to having you all at our centers whenever you have some time. Uh, at the same time, we I have created a, a, a WhatsApp channel, uh, which will be uh, in uh, you know launched very soon. We have our uh, Coaching Beyond website, which you keep, uh, please keep looking at it and uh, we'll soon have a newsletter uh, coming out regularly, which will uh, tell you about the latest research in uh, sports coaching. 
we have an instagram handle please follow it a youtube channel all these things are going to be uh, you know having a lot of uh, new ideas and innovations as well as some drills for you to uh, master from there uh, some more exciting news uh, uh, coaching beyond is expanding yes uh, we are undertaking uh, some new projects at hyderabad and chennai at the same time we are expanding to newer locations as well uh, within india uh, outside india in the in the car- in the coming uh, months uh, you will hear more about it so those of you all who are interested in becoming part of our family as uh, members of our staff uh, please uh, reach out to us uh, with your intentions come and do a small internship with us to get to know us better to, for us to get to know you better and learn each other's methods i think that could be a stepping stone to uh, enlarging and expanding our our uh, territory in the coming months so uh, look out for these announcements in the uh, next few months the much awaited batting master class with uh, our master coach jay kumar it's all ready uh it's all packaged done and uh, we'll probably launch it uh, next month uh, we'll let you know the exact dates uh, in the next week or so and the long awaited level b yeah all of you all i think waiting eagerly for a level b is going to be a very immersive and engrossing course that we have lined up uh we are waiting for the right opportune moment to set it up and get it started uh but it should happen very soon so all of you all uh, uh, start uh, reading your level 1 practicing and applying yeah just reading is not enough applying what you learned in level 1 is uh, the key to uh, preparing better for a good level 2 level 2 performance okay uh, uh also uh, show your interest to come in for internships because the best way to learn your coaching is by working alongside master coaches okay not just doing uh various courses courses teach you some knowledge but the skills are actually learned when you work in an internship program so internships are uh, key uh, lastly we also plan to uh, do a high performance course for coaches of other sports so if you have some friends who are football athletics gymnastics uh volleyball table tennis coaches please uh, let them know about it and maybe in january or february we will be launching a high performance uh, course for coaches of other disciplines as well and with that uh, wish you a very good afternoon uh, thanks a lot shri and arun for uh, all your inputs very enlightening and uh, thanks to all of you all for joining in on this program thank you very much thank you doc thank you everyone once again for joining in thank on a sunday morning wish you all a happy diwali Happy thank you thank you for trusting us thank you for trusting coaching beyond and uh, and all of us to further your coaching career